This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Dumpster Diving, where we look at the uh, the pop culture detritus of the world. Mike, this week, oh my God, maybe the worst movie I've ever seen. It's pretty close. I think this is worse than Jack and Jill. Oh, I really like this movie. Do you? You love it, huh? No. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like I, I don't know if you can make if you could intentionally make a movie that's worse than that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I think you would mess up, and it would be enjoyable or funny in in some way. Like Tommy Wiseau did uh, the Room, a- and people love that. People think it's funny. And it is, it's funnier than this movie. The Room is funnier than this movie. So the movie we're talking about, uh, you know, if you guys can't read, is, or if you're blind, I guess, blind people might listen to this, um, is The Love Good Guru. For you if you do. The Love Guru uh, starring Michael Myers. First of all, so, yeah, Love Guru with Michael Myers One thing I learned from this movie is that Ben Kingsley will do anything for a paycheck. How, like, Academy Award winner Ben Kingsley is in this movie. Playing a, playing, like, you know, an Indian stereotype when he won his Academy Award for playing Gandhi. (laughs) Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, the devil just cashed in all those tickets at mm-hmm. once to get people to be in this movie or what, but uh, yeah, it's a complete shit show from the beginning. Oh, absolutely. Like it's it's like it's like the it, it's like Michael Myers like took all his goodwill and like used it, cashed it at once to make this movie. Like uh, it's a complete and utter vanity project, and the only person who would be interested in this is Mike Myers, as far as I know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like who who read this script. Like Jessica Alba got sent this script in in two thousand seven or whatever, and was like, "Yeah, I'll yeah," do but it was in a bag of diamonds. I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It had to have been. Uh, Justin Timberlake's in this movie. Uh, uh, Romani Malco's in this movie. Megan Good. Troyer. Yeah, man, know, Fer- yeah, Fern Troyer. Rest in peace. Uh, Deepak Chopra makes an appearance in this movie. Uh, apparently, I guess at this time, Mike Myers was watching a lot of The Daily Show because Stephen Colbert and John Oliver are in this movie for some reason. Maybe he's watching a yeah, lot of comedy. Neither stuff. are good. Yeah, no, no, not not at all. Uh, Samantha Bee's also in this. So is Daniel Tosh. Uh, Jim Gaffigan's in it. Jessica Simpson makes a brief appearance. Mariska Hargitay, who is a... A joke in the movie? Yeah, I, I guess it's hilarious to say that name. Yeah, instead of saying Namaste, they say Mariska Hargitay. And she's at the beginning of the movie, and he acknowledges that she exists in this world. It's not just a, you know, like a guru thing to say. And he says, Mar- Mariska Hargitay, Mariska Hargitay. And I prayed to all that was holy that that was the end of the joke, and they weren't going to do it anymore. No, they do it the entire movie. Yes, yeah. the The premise is that he's like a a guru from India. He's he's the second most famous guru after uh, Deepak Chopra. That he was after Deepak yeah. Chopra. Yeah, the only guru anyone knows. No, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, upset some people here. There are some uh, things that don't make logical consistency. <laughs> yep. Like for some reason, he's like in a flying carpet, which is like this little like uh, this little like square of rug that's like on like i don't know it's like I, i'm really not sure it just moves around like he'll sit and it's like a foot off the ground and he'll like you know use this to uh i'm pretty sure that that's the middle east where uh, flying carpets are from not india yeah agreed um he gets hired by the uh this is clearly written by a canadian person by the uh, toronto blue jays who are close to winning the stanley cup maple leafs Yes. Who did I say? The Blue Jays? Yeah. Get out of my cab, you sir. <laughs> Look, I said I'm not a racist. Um, 
Yeah, that's the f- the funniest thing. The only funny thing about that this movie. That might be movie. the most. Uh, that might be the least believable part of the whole movie. Yes, is that the Toronto Maple Leafs are in the Stanley Cup Finals. And the criminally underused actor, I cannot remember his name. He's in um the forty year old virgin. He's in the movie Weeds. He plays the uh, hockey player who's upset because his uh his wife or girlfriend has left him for uh, Justin Timberlake because he has a bigger penis. That's the whole <laughs> premise. Yes. That's it. I'm not kidding. I'm not making it up. That's the joke. And uh, if you think they uh, subtly refer to it a couple times, you right. Yeah. There's uh there's a whole bunch of for some reason everything that this guru does is a, an acronym of something. Uh, like there's drama, which is the big thing, and it stands for distraction, regression, acceptance, maturity, and action. I think. Um, but I think it's pretty important to remember too that there's at least two like five plus minute long uh, s- uh, sequences of him playing the sitar to a uh, popular music. Yes, at the very and beginning, singing and acting out and dancing out the entire fucking. Yeah, at the very beginning, there's one to nine to five. Uh, they do when when Jessica Alba comes to his uh, ashram, they do um, more than words, <laughs> which, you know, what a hit from I guess it's 1995 Great. or whatever the year that came out. Um, and then uh, wasn't that the guy who joined uh, Van Halen eventually uh, extreme? Yes. That's Gary correct. Sharon, maybe that is correct. Yes. Uh, and then at the end, of course, they do a big like Bollywood style number two for some reason. Any, any any movie where they're making fun of India, basically, they've got to do a Bollywood style sing. Yeah, I don't think any people were especially at arms or offended by this movie just because it's so terrible. They didn't want anyone to think uh, that they might be any way associated with uh, this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but so yeah, like, like, like you get the strong impression repeatedly that Michael Mike Myers is owed a big favor by somebody. I mean, I don't know why they would make this movie. I mean, this is definitely at a low of his career after the uh, the third uh, um, Austin Powers movie, which mm-hmm. I don't think did very well. I mean, at least critically, for sure, it was a terrible movie. Yeah, um, it, it's weird too because at the very beginning, he he wants to be the next Deepak Chopra. But he needs to get on Oprah to be the next Deepak Chopra. And the only way to get on Oprah, it's stated by John Oliver, uh, whose name is hilariously Dick Pants. Um, <laughs> that's a joke, I guess, in this movie. Uh, but anyway. There's no Dick Beans. Yeah. So uh, the only way for him to get on Oprah is to get this guy, Darren, uh, Darren Roenick and his girlfriend Prudence back together. However, at the same time, <laughs> and this is what's so fucking stupid. At the same time, Jessica Alba, who owns the Toronto Maple Leafs, she needs to get, you know, she wants to win the Stanley Cup, but the only way to do it is, oh, she knows a guru that can get uh, Garrett, Darren back, uh, you know, where he needs to be. So it's like they both have the you it was one or the other. Either she seeks him out because she needs him or he's aware of it and seeks her out to offer assistance you know because he wants to get on Oprah, which given everything else that happens in the movie would have made more sense if he was coming at this from a non like a, a non healthy place like he just wants the fame and everything that would have made more sense, but she's also already aware of him and seeks him out, uh, as to, to be, uh, you know, to assist. It makes no fucking sense. No, like, uh, you get the impression that Mike Myers saw like a bunch of old, like, uh, David. I, I, I could do it in an accent. Let's make an entire movie out of this. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, Pete's. It's, I, I can't think of one joke during the entire movie that hits. No, I didn't laugh once. Um, I I didn't even. There's more laughs at funerals than there are in this movie. There was so I I saw times when I was supposed to laugh, you know, and didn't. But 
I, there, nothing came close to making me laugh. It wasn't just like I, you know, I watched this by myself and, you know, if other people had been there, you know, like it wasn't a right, watch it with the right people or in the right mood kind of thing. Nothing even, even, it was just the stupidest, like, play on words, too. Um, one, like, if you had been blind your entire life and then uh, as you were, like, you know, as your sight was restored, you started to see this movie. I would be like, you know, it's not really worth it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's there's one point where he goes, he says, what does he say? Um, oh, uh, he's got, he has taken a vow of celibacy and he has some sort of fucking chastity belt. Chastity on. belt, yeah. So he says he can only um, date three women named Anne. Anne Visible and something else and and job and then like every time he says one of these stupid puns he laughs at his own joke and then like like my dad would laughs, laughs at his own joke <laughs> and then like pokes the person is like get it and job it's like yeah i okay it's like a four-year-old wrote this and then acted it out yeah i, I don't know this is uh it's an it's an aggressively bad movie. Like I, I I I don't understand. Again, I don't understand how anyone was even able to you know pledge money towards this. It's just so. Yeah. I I don't I don't know how it got past any phase of movie making to become uh, an actual film. <laughs> but some I imagine like Mike Myers had some sort of prior agreement. Like, well, if you uh, if I'm in Gold Number Three, I get to make my own movie. Yeah. Yeah, I get to and and no out. questions asked. He made them a lot of money at certain points, to his, which he apparently had them re-record the entire thing because he wanted to change it to a funny Scottish accent. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. He, he's. I mean, obviously, Mike Myers has done much better than this. I mean, Mike Myers has made some movies that you know I've thought were absolutely hilarious. Um, the, the, both, uh, Wayne's world movies are very good. Um, I like, uh, so I married an ax murderer, uh, a lot. Um, there's, there's some, you know, of that where it's just him doing a Scottish accent, the, which is not particularly hilarious, but, um, but a lot of that movie is very funny, it, it, but uh, this is just terrible. Like a lot, there's no way around it. There's no redeeming quality to it. No, I mean, <laughs> at, at one point, the Darren, uh, you know, Darren Roenick, every word that he says when he first meets the love guru is like exactly what I'm thinking because he's like, uh, you know, I think he says something like, you know, that's not funny or you're ridiculous, and then he's like, just stop, and I'm like, yes. All that, like these, should be script notes for the, for the movie. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know why that guy uh, who played uh, Ronick isn't in more stuff. He was in, like I said, he was in Weeds. He was mm-hmm. in uh, the Forty Year Old Virgin. He's very f- hilarious actor, but he, he was bad. He, he's not great in this because this is a really bad movie. And, and uh, we forgot to mention Vern Troyer is like the coach of the uh, the Maple Leafs for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, uh, there's like multiple scenes where like he's being picked up by Mike. My- you know, Mike Myers just wrote that in the script without ask- ask- asking him. He's like, yeah, I'll just pick the guy up. He- he'll like it. It'll be funny. Yeah, he picks him up at one point and and thanks the Academy or whatever, which was a fresh and hilarious joke when Dean Martin did it to Sammy Davis Jr. in 1963. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah, when when Bugs Bunny did it, it, it wasn't the most original thing way back then. Yeah, like. I mean, this joke, its you talk about de- beating a when dead Earl, horse. When Earl Flynn took the stage and made the same exact joke. Yeah. This is uh, this is burning a horse, uh, beating the ashes, and then beating the ground. And then jizzing on it. Jeez. I mean, it's terrible. And for some reason, Jessica Alba really wants to have sex with this guru. Yeah. That always, like, just puzzles me like uh i the my biggest example that is in the movie super bad at the end like when jonah hill and uh, emma stone are like at the mall mm-hmm. i don't 
feel any attraction uh, on her end to him at all. Like it doesn't even. It, she just seems like annoyed that she has to do it. I, I honestly am unsure if in the movie she's supposed to have like fallen for him or what. I really don't know. I, I just don't know. Yeah, that that is a really weird, ambiguous uh, situation. Like no chemistry. No, and that's the problem is is Mike Myers and Jessica Alba don't have any chemistry together either. Twice, and, and you see no reason why uh, Jessica Alba, who's one of the the most attractive women uh, mm-hmm. that I've ever seen, yep. would want to be uh, with this weirdo who like uh, plays sitar versions of every fucking uh, popular song since like you know the nineteen. 19- right, they. <laughs> At one point, uh, Guy, whatever the fuck his name is, Lecoq, that's, his nickname is Lecoq because he's got a giant dick, apparently. Um, <laughs> but the one played by Justin Timberlake, at one point, uh, Roanoke's got a, uh, got a breakaway, and he does what they call the five-hole trick, I guess, which is where he pretends like the five holes open uh, and for those of you that don't know hockey, that's between the legs. And then he closes it at the end, uh, you know, to make the save. Um, so that, that causes, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy, the guy that hosts, uh, David Letterman's old show now, uh, Stephen Colbert. He, he does this thing where he draws out, oh, you could try to go here. You could try to go there or right here at the end. So he's drawing a dick basically between the guy's legs. It's the second joke of somebody representing a penis while not meaning to or whatever in the movie the other one is something they're eating uh where they take two nuts and they put it in uh this fucking dough and then fry i mean like it's and this is all like they do it twice and it's so like it's such an old stupid joke there is no original humor in this movie at all. The movie's the only good thing about the movie is that it's only about an hour and 20 minutes long. And like Mike yeah, and it's I, not especially long. and like Mike and I said about 15 minutes of that runtime is, is filled with music. So they just didn't have enough to fill out an entire movie. But Mike Myers was still like, this is a good idea. This, I don't think would have even been that funny of a Saturday night live sketch let alone an no. entire film. Yeah, it's uh it, it's like it's Pat the movie but not as good. Exactly. This I mean Stuart saves his family was better. Yeah, I haven't seen enough to take your word on it. Oh god. Okay, it's it's uh, it, it's baffling. I don't uh, if you it I wonder I was going to Rewatch it just to see if I actually like watch. I mean, was that a dream I had? <laughs> Somebody, I guess they did. <laughs> Seriously, no. I've I've had situations like that before where I'm watching something. I'm like, you know, is this like like? Uh, it, 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 do I not have the right movie? Like, is this? Did someone switch discs on me? Like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a mess. Um, I don't recommend this. Uh, it, uh, I, uh, I like I said, I, I might watch it again just because it's such a weird movie. It's it's insulting that somebody would think any anybody on earth would find. Yes, it is. It is insulting. It's insulting to the audience that that were this dumb babies like, wouldn't find this movie funny. It's like Mike Myers is actually like an alien from another planet, and he just doesn't understand like what humans find funny. Mm-hmm. Which, like I said, is weird because he's done so much better in the past. Like, and he wrote this. He wrote this with Graham Gordy. I don't know. It's. I, it's... I assume this is mostly Graham Gordy's work. I don't know, but yeah, it, know. it's terrible. Uh, at one point, two elephants have sex with each other because that's hilarious. Yeah, and then, then there's a bunch of uh, exotic animals and like pet carriers because you know that. It's yeah. funny, and you take it and you go. Yep. Yeah, that's... Oh, God. How's that elephant supposed to get on that fucking plane? Like a regular-ass plane, by the way. It's not how they ship elephants. I don't know. I, I don't understand anything about this movie. Ugh. And that one elephant was just there for the circus. I don't know. 
Uh, and and this is the other thing too. So this is the same problem I have with Celtic Pride. Jessica Alba talks about how it's the curse of her family because you know, much like the Fords with the Lions, I guess uh, they bought the the team in 1967 and they haven't won a Stanley Cup since. And everyone hates her for whatever reason, even though she's just taken over the team uh, from her dad who died. Uh, and they're in the Stanley Cup finals. Right. Like everyone hates her because, oh, we haven't won a Stanley Cup since your family bought it. You're in the finals. Do you think people would be pissed off at the Fords if the Lions win the Super Bowl? I mean, that, it's ridiculous. Why are they yeah, mad they- at her? My fear is that if the Lions ever made it to the uh, Super Bowl, which you know isn't happening, no. um, that it would be worse if we if we lost. Like I don't know, it would be worse if we won or lost. Either way, the city would be torn apart. Oh God, yeah. Oh man, yeah. So that makes no sense to me that everyone would hate her. There are so many logical fa- like it's not even worth it to go through the logical fallacies in the movie because the movie's just fucking trash. It's. It's There's an no embarrassment it. of celluloid. I mean, you just can't imagine no one working on this movie was happy with what they were doing. No. And maybe Daniel Tosh, because I think it's his first movie. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, and Daniel, Ta- Daniel Tosh doesn't have incredibly high standards. But um, And he, he, I think he's in there for one scene, maybe, because what they're... Is there something like they're at a at a bar and then like Daniel Tosh and mm-hmm. whoever else is there. And I can't remember what they get upset about. Maybe they're like holding hands or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, they're, uh, they're two of uh very typical uh, Toronto Maple Leafs fans in Toronto. None of whom, not a single person in this movie has a Canadian accent. Michael Myers is from Canada. You would think <laughs> that he would know that maybe they wouldn't speak like redneck Americans in Toronto. But no, they all just speak with no accent know. whatsoever. <laughs> I don't think uh, Michael Myers knows anything anymore, uh, or Mike Myers, or whatever <laughs> fuck his name. Either is. I don't know. I don't know. Not the murderer. One, uh, I think he could have just swapped the two out for each other in this movie. And yeah, it would have made a difference. Exactly. Yeah, Michael Myers has made funnier movies <laughs> than this. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Halloween Five is a lot funnier than this shit. <laughs> oh my god it's so terrible um it's, uh, it's it's bewilderingly bad like there's uh, i don't i know we keep saying the same thing over it, it's it's hard to believe how bad this movie is i wouldn't be surprised if there was uh, a high suicide rate on the uh the oh, cast geez. and crew of this movie like it, it, like you said it's baffling how how this could have gotten made. I just, I don't understand how, you know, you have to see this movie guys to fully understand what we're talking about because I've seen a lot of bad comedies before and you can say like, Oh, you know, whatever comedy subjective and blah, blah, blah. I don't like (sighs) did massive head wound. Harry, is that who approved this? (laughs) Oh, maybe he was around for a bit. Massive head wound. Harry. Oh my god! I mean, it's like you said, it's aggressively bad. Like, like you see, you can tell within like the first two minutes it's not even moving. You're like, this is not going to get any better than this, is it? And it, <laughs> no. It, no. Like, it, maybe like the first few like you know notes when you hear them playing like the song and like it starts. Like, <laughs> they're not really going to do that, are they? And yes, they are. Oh. It's. Swing. I mean, yeah. At one, yeah, at one point. They're playing with the radio. And, oh, I forgot all about that part. And fucking Bohemian Rhapsody comes on, and Michael Myers looks dead at the camera for a second before turning it off. And it's like, no, don't you dare. Don't you dare invoke Wayne's World in this piece of shit movie. Great. Oh, God. Terrible. That's not Very funny bad. either. Nothing is funny. Like if that if that if that joke or if that bit had ever been funny or ever would have been funny to me, they they burned any goodwill that they had to make me even chuckle at that. I just got angry. It's not at funny it. and it never will be. Ugh. What a fucking movie. Um. 
So what yeah, waste. this is literally like a, I, I've heard of people suing uh, movies before. This is a, a complete waste of my time. Yeah, this would be like that scene in Clerks, the animated series, where uh, Randall asks for his money back from all the different movies. This would definitely be one. Who out of their movies do you think you would ask for a, a refund that you like saw in the theater? Mm. Well, uh, for sure, I mean, I've mentioned it before, for sure, The Mangler. That, yeah. <laughs> that movie is a piece of shit. Yeah, I've heard that's very bad. I can't believe you saw it in the theater, though. I can't believe it was in the theater. Mm-hmm, yeah. I saw it at the Oakland Mall Theater with my sister. Oh. Because we're both... You said that, you freak. We're both, big, <laughs> we're both big Stephen King fans. The Mangler specifically. Hey, is the Mangler? No, I actually don't remember the short story being that bad. It's pretty but good, the actually. Movie, is, the, is the movie worse than Dreamcatcher? The movie? Yes. Wow. Yeah, and Dreamcatcher is awful, which I also Dreamcatcher. saw in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Yeah, Toby. Your fandom helped uh, fill uh, Stephen King's pool up. Thank Appar- you. Apparently, Toby Hooper directed the movie, and he. He wrote the screenplay along with Stephen King and then like three other people, which is never a good sign. If you ever see if you ever see a screenplay and there's like seven names attached to it, that's not a good sign. No, it's never good. That means people worked on it and then like other people reworked on it and it got it got worked over a lot because it was not working. Uh and yeah, it's never good. Um it made one point eight million dollars. <laughs> nice <laughs> but and that's another thing too it's like toby hooper's done some good work too i don't i don't get it yeah i don't know if at a certain point like uh with toby hooper maybe he's just like well i need some money you know and then mm-hmm. his name would sell but mike myers cannot need money no he did at least two successful film franchises wayne's world and uh, austin powers mm-hmm. yeah I mean, you know, I, I imagine those alone would have him set for life. Shrek, he was in, you know, like three of those movies too. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure he was making a health, healthy paycheck. But I mean, so this is strictly a vanity project. I, I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't understand it. I don't yeah. see how he could find this funny. No, I don't either. Like, like he has a better sense of humor than this. I mean, not a lot. <laughs> like, I mean, I I don't want to like just destroy Michael Myers or anything like that. I'm not the biggest fan of, of his particular brand of humor, um, but you know, in certain in certain instances, and you know, just the right amount of it, uh, it usually works. Uh, I'm know, not, I think uh, Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I'm not a big fan of the Shrek movies or or anything like that. And Wayne's World is good. Um, but that's a very particular that's a very particular style of humor and like sense of humor for those things. Um, you know, with the, all the Scottish stuff and and some of the Austin the way Austin Powers get the movies get gets really ridiculous. Yeah, I think uh like I know he's obviously Canadian, just like the kids in the hall. It's like they like kind of diverged at a certain point. Like they he went like Mike Myers went more towards like silly and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas the kids in the the hall went more towards like this surreal or like darker like you know sense of like england yeah for sure and and, and yeah, I don't know. yeah and i don't like the i'm not i mean i'm just not a big fan of the silly type humor uh and and there are you know people will say like like the third austin powers movie i i i know people that that think that that movie's funny and oh, it's not. and it's i'm like bad. okay you know I, I get it i guess whatever you 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 think that really silly stuff is funny okay um, I don't, but this well, that, movie, you key I'm this movie is like, there's, there is no, no one can find this funny. No, I defy anyone to tell me that this is funny and then explain how and why. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a mess. I, 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 I honestly think uh, you and I could go and like, just write a script without interruption and it would be better than this and mm-hmm. make more logical sense. And, uh, yep. Yeah. So yeah, this uh, this movie's a uh, it, it's it might it might be the worst movie we've seen. Uh, actually, I think Showgirls Two was worse uh, by quite a bit. Actually, oh, uh, I forgot about Showgirls Two. I, I mean, it, that movie I guess kind of looks like it's like actually trying to do something, whereas this movie's just like 
Mike Myers like doing inside jokes that only he finds funny for like an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, I mean this movie, like the Love Guru is in focus. You know, the, mo- the movie's in focus. Yeah. It's got good production value. Definitely production value wise, it's much better than Showgirls too. Yeah, that's very true. But uh, but yeah, but not as entertaining. No, Showgirls two was more entertaining. <laughs> God. Uh, so next time we will statistically do something better than this. I like how Trouble Girls Two they got like two of like the least well known people from the movie to be in the movie. Yeah, I know. Like one of them wrote it and like directed it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have even realized that it had a, that they were in the first Showgirls movie if it hadn't been specifically stated multiple times. Yes. Uh because I would have been like, who? Like I. This is just some cheap, stupid ripoff. Yes, and it has a subplot with a snuff film. Yeah, yeah, but it's better than um, the Love Guru. Yeah, it's better than the Love Guru. It's better Which than you kind of hoped ended up as a. Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly. It would have been better as a snuff film. <laughs> oh God. If you had seen Baghdad Bob pop up at the last minute, it would have made him believe that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, what a terrible film. But the Baghdad Bob guy? No, oh, he was fine. <laughs> oh, no, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of a different guy. Uh, who was it? They had like, uh, you know, this is not a subject we need to go into on this podcast. <laughs> I mean, we don't need to go into, into beheadings. I know we're, we're, we're constantly talking about 9-11 and AIDS and stuff, but Oh, you're talking about somebody that does beheadings? Yeah, there were like these three, like, uh, they were from, uh, they thought they were from England. They called them like the Beatles. It was like uh, one of them they called John, the other one they called Ringo. Did you even hear about these guys? (laughs) No. Yeah, there were like four, like, uh, you know, Muslims who were like, you know, killing people and doing beheadings on behalf of like, uh, I don't know, whatever it was at the time, but there were four of them and they all gave like a name after a Beatle and I think they all died looking at, you know, a missile. Oh wow! So kind of like, uh, kind of like the real Beatles, <laughs> <laughs> right? In the drone attack. Well, the... I guess in a lot of ways uh, we could uh, argue that. Uh... <laughs> I almost, I almost said Mark Lynn Baker, but I know that's not. Real. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who shot shot <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Mark Lynn Baker, uh, Corson and Larry, cut it out, cut it out, killing. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know that's Corson and Larry. I can't remember <laughs> the guy who shot uh, John Lennon. <laughs> um, Mark David Chapman. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, the Beatles dubbed as such. He but... was a he was a drone for the CIA due to the MK Ultra experiments, as we. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the Beatles. Uh, what yeah. happened to George Harrison? He, I guess he got cancer. Right. He smoked a thousand cigarettes a day. <laughs> Oh, that'll do it. And then died of lung cancer, yeah. Uh, the and be- died of a broken heart. The, the Beatles dubbed as such by their hostages because of their English accent. So the, the hostages called them that. Was an Islamic state of Iraq and the Levant, or ISIL. Do you think they had so. beetle fever when they saw them? <laughs> it was beetle mania. Beetle <laughs> Could you mania, imagine? Like, it. woo! Um, right. Its members were nicknamed John. It's funny because John is a hyperlink. Oh, to... Mohammed Amwazi. Oh, great. Now that you said that name, we're on a list. Right. Uh, he is dead, though. He died in 2015. So, uh, John, Paul, George, and Ringo by the hostages after the four members of the British. Were- yeah, we get it. In November 2015, one of the militants was killed and one was arrested. And the final two were caught in early 2018 and transferred to U.S. military custody in 2019. I, I guess they were victims of the American invasion. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> if I give you enough time, you always get to gold. I just keep talking until <laughs> I just keep talking till you till you think of it. And then there it is. Payback's a bitch, mates. <laughs> oh yeah the the Baghdad Bob guy was the guy that came on. That um, said, like they were like the the troops were like at the end of the block and pushing back the Americans or something. Yeah, yeah, we're winning. Like the whole time is they're getting fucking destroyed. I mean, that guy was hilarious, but at the same time, you gotta imagine he probably was responsible for some death. I mean, he was like a high ranking. Yeah, seriously, he certainly ordered people to die. It'd be like having uh, Joseph Goebbels as like you know the uh, opening comedian on the David Letterman show. <laughs> like, oh, this guy's a riot. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. You know my uh, you know my assistant Mangala. <laughs> my uh, wife and I were uh, making fun of the Germans uh, earlier today, like with our wacky accents. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like. Yeah, we're talking about the Russian. It just like a. Okay, this is obviously a sidetrack. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so I always find it ridiculous that people talk about what a, like a brilliant like you know uh, strat- strategic uh, you know commander uh, Hitler was because he was so bad on so many levels. <laughs> he was yes. Like, like if he, like, thank God he was there. If he wasn't, the Germans would have fucking taken over the world. Yeah, seriously. Anyone that was competent at leading an army would have succeeded. So I feel like he, like, you know, he definitely was, you know, was, uh, was in the right track with the propaganda, you know. But I don't know that the rest of his troops felt the same way he did. Right. I mean, I don't know if, they, I mean, I don't know if the average German troop was as anti-Semitic. Yet at the same time, uh, really, when you think about it, the entire uh, country of Germany largely participated in being, you know, pretty aware of this, or at least turning a blind eye, but then after the war, it's like, oh, we know nothing! Yeah, exactly! <laughs> yep. Yeah, they, pull, like, they okay. pulled a uh, Hogan's Heroes there. Yeah, and then we were like, whatever, <laughs> we just wink and... Uh, we'll take all your best scientists. For a rocket program? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. God. Like, I think some of the scientists we took were like, just, like, straight-up Nazis, too, like... Mm-hmm. Like one of them, sure. I can't remember which one, especially for the rocket program. Like some of them were like, you know, just like really heavily involved in the Nazi party. Mm-hmm. Yep. But they, they got a free pass as long as, uh, you know, they helped further American interests overseas. Much like uh, Mike Myers got a free pass with a studio for making a live group. Yeah. Apparently <laughs> the fact that he was, the fact that he was allowed to make other movies after this is pretty amazing. Has he made other movies after this? Well, I know at least some of those, the Shrek movies have been... Uh, well, yeah, I wouldn't count those because, you know, obviously those are like a guaranteed hit, basically. Yeah. Um, I think I'd rather I'd rather see more movies from Roman Polanski than Mike Myers. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, Polanski did win an Academy Award. <laughs> I heard he released a movie recently that was like uh, considered one of his best Oh really? Well, good for him. Um, yeah, good for him. So this is this is what I, he's. I heard. Uh, I heard John Wayne Gacy had some cool films too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is they would have been funnier. This is th- <laughs> this is what he's been in since the Love Guru, Inglorious Bastards, as in, in that one oh, yeah. scene. That one. Well, that one fifty minute scene. Yeah, Shrek Forever After, uh, Oscar Etiquette, which is a short film. Uh, Being Canadian Sometimes, which is a documentary. Uh, Supermensch, The Legend of Shep Gordon. <laughs> oh, my God. Which is also a documentary, and he made the documentary, and he plays himself. Um, apparently, it's a film about talent manager Shep Gordon. Uh, I don't know. Oh, Shep Gordon's a real human being. So... Unlike the uh, character that Mike Myers wanted to play in the Gong Show, where he was like the whole time it, he was like <laughs> like a Jiminy Glick esque character, but you supposedly couldn't tell it was him. Yep, exactly. Uh, a fucking weirdo. <laughs> he's a fucking weird guy. Uh, then he was in I Am Chris Farley, uh, playing himself, not Chris Farley. Um, oh, thank God, and I'm, I'm sure he. I'm sure he asked. <laughs> right. But he uh, he it's that's that's another documentary. So he's been in three documentaries since then uh then finally he's in a movie called terminal which apparently is a neo-noir thriller um that stars Mar- margot robbie I- i'm i'm guaranteeing you he's in the movie for maybe 10 minutes stops right and then Bohemian. Oh, look i'm going down a flight of stairs says he's behind a couch pretending to uh, walk. <laughs> and then bohemian rhapsody where he plays, oh, yeah, I he was in that. He plays the uh, like uh, they play, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, obviously. And he's like, "Oh, this song's too long. No kids will ever rock out to this in a car. It'll never be a funny scene in a movie, ever. Um, we're not doing it." And they're like, "You'll be forever known as the man who uh, who lost the Beatles." And it's like, "Wow, that that manager's really bit was put on blast." And then you you do some research and you realize that guy never existed. So. The the only the only um I think you researched this. The only conflict in that entire movie 
uh, was uh, rejection from a manager that never existed, and then Bohemian Rhapsody in the, in the parlance of the movie becomes a enormous hit. The scene after that, <laughs> that movie sucks so bad. Bohemian Rhapsody does it? Yeah, it's it almost as bad, bad as the Love, Love Guru. Guru. Yeah. Oh wow! No, it's bad. it's probably ten times better than the Love Guru, but it's still terrible. So it's like a five point oh on IMDb. Yeah, maybe. Maybe lower, maybe a four. Does that have that iRobot guy in there? Yes, and he's good. Remy Malik's really good in it, and he's good. He does a good um, Freddie Mercury, too. But the rest of the movie's terrible. Pretty good. Yeah, very badly written. Um, yeah, gong show on TV, and then everything else is just, you know, like Saturday Night Live, you played Dr. Evil for, like, you know, one uh, one episode or whatever. Yeah, I think it was like the... I think it was like the reunion, like the 50th reunion or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Who, who gives a I, mean, fuck? I think he played Wade on there. I mean, uh, Dana Carvey came. Yeah, it's it's not. Uh, actually, I think Jessica, I think it just said Jessica Alba hosted that episode. So what the fuck is with him uh, and Jessica Alba? Oh, man. Maybe she really does have the hot spot. Yeah, maybe she really does want a piece of that sweet, sweet nine, five hole or whatever, whatever fucking joke they made with cock. I don't know. There's a lot of dick jokes in this movie, and none of them are funny. No, not nothing in the movie is funny. I we we cannot stress how unfunny this movie is. You, it's it's hard to believe how bad this movie is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. It, like, I think that that uh, the Beatles, uh, you know, the terrorist group, should have been shown this movie as torture. To get them back. So would you say that they would you say that they were really the shitty Beatles? Yes, exactly. And it's not just a clever nickname. No, it's not just a clever nickname. <laughs> oh God. Well, that is our episode for the week. Uh as don't always. Watch this movie. Yeah, don't watch the movie. Um if, you, if you're looking for a really unique way to punish your children, I would say make them watch this movie. Yeah. If you if you want to hear more uh, terrorists and 9-11 talk, uh, just tune in next week. <laughs> and we will be there to uh, to oblige. But uh, until then, uh, we bid you adieu. Bye. Swing.